In this case, the only determination this office is making is whether or not Officer Vincent acted in self-defense. Now I'd like to speak to the community. I know that some out there are going to be frustrated. I want everyone in this community to know that we meticulously, thoroughly reviewed all of the evidence in this case, made sure it was credible evidence in order to make the decision that we made today. We took a lot of painstaking effort to make certain that there was no personal bias in the review, and that public opinion did not factor in our determination. I'd like the community to take a collective pause. The community should read the report, digest the report. Please do not act viscerally on news snippets. Read the report. In describing the legal analysis and the basis for the decision, in this case, my office and I unfortunately find ourselves in a position of correcting misinformation that has been shared both on social media and in the news media. People made claims on camera but later admitted to law enforcement that they didn't actually see the incident. People and the public might then ask themselves, why didn't you release more information to refute these untrue statements? I have always asserted that my office would strive towards transparency. But I need people to understand that among my highest priorities, priorities is also protecting the integrity of every investigation. That means responsible transparency. Responsible transparency. In an ongoing investigation, details are close, closely guarded to help measure the truthfulness of witnesses and should some, someone be charged, preserve the defendant's right to fair trial. I know that a lack of accurate information is frustrating to the public and the media that operates on a 24-hour news cycle. But in this age of instant media and the impulse to immediately form an opinion, I'm asking that as we move forward, we remind ourselves that in, in these cases, we should not jump to conclusions until we have all of the facts. In the days that followed Mr. Scott's death, we watched as long simmering frustrations boiled over. I heard observers say, this is not Charlotte. This is not the city that we love, but it is. This is Charlotte. This is where our friends, families, neighbors, and colleagues felt so passionate that they marched on our streets to call for change. Let me be clear. I have not and will not condone violence or property damage as a means of expression. But the fact that criminal charges are not appropriate under the law in this particular case does not mean we can dismiss the concerns expressed by those who raise their voices to raise the consciousness of this community. I think it's high time that all of us recognize that this is Charlotte and not everyone experiences the same Charlotte. Throughout our entire justice system, people should have the same experience. The people of Mecklenburg County deserve the confidence that every case is handled with fairness and equity. I want this community to know that I would not hesitate to prosecute an officer whom evidence showed acted outside of the law. And in fact, we have. From assaults to DWIs to fraud to unfortunately sexual offenses, we have prosecuted officers. It is my sincere prayer that no one is ever killed by police. But I also pray that police are never placed in a position of having to make the decision to use lethal force to protect themselves or innocent lives around them. I welcome being part of the ongoing public discussion and exchange of ideas on how to improve our system so that all community members have complete confidence that they will be dealt with fairly 
and treated with respect. Justice demands nothing less.